Well, howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to do part two of our MB server series of videos. Well, series, you know, this is number two. I don't know if there will be a number three. There might be. Um, but in this video, we're going to cover the basic setup of MB, how to set up your media libraries and scrape your metadata and how to set up live TV. Also, how to set up multiple guides, like if you have, like I have, I have HD home run units that are over the air, uh, so I get local channels over the air, I have one guide, set of guide data for that, and then I get the premium channels from Silicon Desk for 35 bucks a month, actually, I think it's gone down to 25 because of a kerfuffle with licensing, so more to follow on that. So the long and the short of that is I need to be able to download two separate sets of guide data. So we cover we cover on that a little bit in this video. Now, I am a longtime user of Plex Media Server back when it was open source, back before there was a Plex Pass. And in fact, I was one of the first people that jumped on the Plex Pass bandwagon for all the features it had. And, you know, I don't mind paying good money for good software. And uh, so uh, I'm a big fan of Plex. But, frankly, they've made some changes to their programs at, uh, in the last two updates. I'm just not, I've had some issues with. Now, some of you may not have had any issues with Plex. And good for you. But I wanted to look at MB and, uh, you know, just as a comparison. And ended up falling in love with it. So this video is kind of a love story. I guess you could say. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't want this to appear as if it's a Plex bashing video. I I bring up some negative things about Plex in the video, but I don't I don't stay on that subject for very long. So I don't want it to appear as though I'm coming off and saying I'll never use Plex again. No, I'll, I'm still using Plex. I have to. I'm running them side by side. Uh, in fact, you know, some of my clients actually use Plex. And uh, for their home audio theater systems, that kind of thing. So uh, it is a service that I can, you know, I can sell. I can help people facilitate the installation of a home media server. That's one of the things my company offers. So, and a lot of times, as a side business to my commercial clients, uh, the owners of the company who usually have a little more money to spend will hire me to do uh, their home networks and will hire me to do their. And they're the one exception I do to, you know to regular uh, end user home networks and audio video systems. So uh, I do have a use for both of these in, in the business that I do. So enough babbling, let's uh, get on with the video that's already in progress right now. All right, so we have MB up and running here. Let me move myself over, <laughs> there I am. Uh, if you notice my paths on this version of MB, this is on a Windows 10 machine. It's an IP address 5.37. That's the bench machine behind me here. The little, uh, that little white box that we built. The uh, gaming and Hackintosh PC. So uh, Windows 10 is installed on there. It's installed on an SSD drive. So I've got all my <coughs> cache, logs, metadata, everything. Temporary transcoding is all running off that SSD drive. So it should be fairly fast, you know, as, as they say. Now, it's busy scanning the media library that I put in there. I'm going to go ahead and move my lovely picture, lovely face back down here in the corner where it belongs. There we go. Thank you. So right now, it's, it's running a library media scan because I added uh, TV shows to the library. So, But it's, it's fairly trivial to add things to the library. Now, because I have my data stored on a different location than I have MB running off of, i.e. on that Dell. So I'm going to go to my library. I've already got TV shows in there. I'm going to, and you can see I've got my universal, my UNC data path in there. So now I'm going to do one for action adventure. So we'll add the media library and this is going to be movies. And then I'm going to click on the folder link and I'm going to type in here, MCS dash Dell dash lab two backslash video. And there should one be one called action dash adventure. Anyway, that's a UNC path to those files or folders. 
except I got lab wrong. There we go. Click on OK. And it looks like it took it, so let's click on OK, and it should start scanning that media library. So let's go back to the dashboard here, and as you can see, it is scanning the media library. I'm going to go ahead and add one more. And that is movies, and these are comedy. And the folders are going to be on the Dell, Lab 2, Video, Comedy. Verify that's correct, tell it OK and OK. And I named this one wrong, you see, and I left it named Movies, so I need to go out and rename. Yes, we want to call it Action Adventure. So even if you do make a boo-boo like I did there, it looks like it's, yep, fairly trivial to go out and rename it. And so we'll come back to our dashboard. And the nice thing I like about the dashboard as well is it has a link to go into MB automatically. So if I just right click on there and open link in a new tab, it'll take me to the MB interface. As you can see, it's already started populating my uh, home screen. Uh, so if we go under TV shows, and we should see all the TV shows under there. It's still getting uh, data for some of these, uh, scraping metadata off the internet for some of these things. But as you can see, it's starting to fill out quite nicely all of my metadata information. And I think that's all the data I have on there right now is action, adventure, and comedy. So we're going to let this media scan for the media library. We're going to let that complete. And we'll come back when that's done. We'll see how long that takes. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes since we started that uh, scan. Let's go see how it did. And it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like it got everything in there. Some of the uh, matches are incorrect. Uh, it could be because of the way I've named things. But it looks to have gotten all the movies that are in there. That's the action adventure. Here's the comedy. As you can see, it got Bridesmaids incorrect, and that's probably due to the naming convention I used. Uh, and you want me to show you how to fix that? Okay, it's this simple. What you need to do, anytime you see an incorrect match like that, just go out here to the three little dots and go down to Identify. And then type in the name of the movie, like Bridesmaids, and you'll see it finds it. I click on it here choose replace existing images click OK and then bing bang boom easy as you please it goes out there and takes care of it same thing with uh, Baywatch I've got the naming convention a little bit wrong go out click identify type in Baywatch now I will warn you you do need to spell things correctly in here and rather than trying to put in the whole name of the movie sometimes just the first few words of the movie like instead of typing in Jurassic Park 3 just type Jurassic or Jurassic Park and you'll usually get a better match that way so there's the Baywatch again replace existing images click on OK it's really that simple and you're seeing this in real time now Plex does this as well it has something very similar to that let me show you one that's harder to match like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy so let's click on the three dots let's go to identify and let me see if I can just type hitch hikers. Yep, that's how I figured it out. Hitch hikers. So we'll choose that one, replace the images, click OK. Easy peasy, right? Some of these that are that are incorrect matches like these two. I don't have two two of the Austin Powers Gold members, but what I can do is I can click on the three dots. I can come up here to edit metadata. And I can actually see that this is Austin Powers. It's not Gold Member. So click on the three dots again and go to Identify. And just type Austin Powers. Click on Search. And this one's International Man of Mystery. Click OK. And it'll go out and correct the incorrect match right there. So that is basically how you... Uh, go out and get your uh, album art as well. Let me show you one more thing. Say you don't like that picture. You can come here to the three dots and you can go to edit images. 
Now, it's not intuitive, okay? You don't click on it and go into it. You have to click on the delete, or the search button, I'm sorry. Click on search, and then it'll give you all these other uh, cover art options you can have, and then you can simply down. So if I wanted my awesome powers to look like this, I just simply click on the download link. It'll download it. And now I can set that as my primary image, and you'll see it's fixed it. So again, go out, edit images, click on the search bar, and we're just going to use this one right here. And bing, bang, boom, it's done. Now, live TV is also very important to me, and in my previous MB video, I covered what I use for live TV. I have an over-the-air antenna. I have also the Silicon Dust Premier uh, television service for 35 bucks a month. And I have two HD home run, uh, Silicon Dust HD home runs. So what I'm going to do is go out there and show you on my Silicon Dust HD home run uh, how to uh, configure that so that it, what you want to do is only, in MB, I only want to see the channels I receive. I get a lot of the over-the-air channels it says I can receive, but I don't actually. So I wanted, what I want to do is block those out from MB even seeing them. Then it won't have to get the guide data, etc., etc. So let's go out and look and see how I connect to those. So I'm, what I didn't say was which model of the HD Home Run I have. I have the HD Home Run Connect. So that gives you two tuners that you can use simultaneously for each device. One of them I got off of Amazon uh, about a year ago. I think they're about 70 bucks is the going rate. You can get a quad port tuner, but I wanted to do the two, two tuners. Plus I was able to get another HD Home Run Connect for 50 bucks off of eBay through a private seller. So that's the, the choice I made. So I have one of these is at address 130. The other is at address 131. So in order to block MB from using any of the channels, it's real simple. For example, say I don't want it to pick up Quest. You can click on it once and that makes it a favorite. If you click on it twice, it actually blocks you receiving that channel in your lineup. And it's very important you do this before you go to MB and get your, uh, your, your live TV set up, which is what we're going to do next. But make sure you come into both of your HD home run devices or your single one and block out all the channels you don't want to receive that way they won't be as you can see there's a bunch of channels it says I receive that I actually do not receive uh, so you'll have to go through and see what channels you receive and what channels you don't so all of my over-the-air channels end right here at uh, 60.3 and then you'll see my other channels with the HD home run service begin here and even some of those I don't want to see, like QVC and ESPN. I'm not a big sports fan, so I block those out. So it's less guide data I have to get from uh, Schedules Direct, and it's less uh, data that has to be processed. So, And that goes all the way down to channel 1755. And I've got this set up the same way on both of my HD Home Run Connects. Now, the idea was is I was going to use one of these HD Home Runs for one of the MBs and I was going to use the other HD home run for the other MB but I think MB will be able to manage this just fine I'm only using this Windows 10 test when I'm doing these demos so I'm not going to worry about too much I'm going to go ahead and give this version of MB that I have up and running access to both live TV tuners so that we can do this demo so it's fairly trivial as long as you follow along with this so go to live TV and the first thing you're going to do is add your tuner devices. Now, this thing will detect your devices automatically. Well, it will the HD Home Run, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Detect Devices. And you'll see it found both of them. So you click on one, and uh, I'm going to... You can also restrict it to channels marked as favorite, and I thought that's what I was going to need to do on the HD Home Run, was go out and flag them as favorite channels. Turns out if you just turn them off, uh, you're, you're, it'll do the same thing. Uh, so you could do it either way. And you'll see it's picked my 131. Let me uh, let me go back. I want to choose 130 as the first one. There we go. So 130. And then click on Save. And then I'm going to do the same thing with 131. Detect my devices. 
I'm going to go out and connect 131. Again, leave the same settings, allow hardware transcoding, and now the settings are saved. So now I have managed to uh, get my both of my tuners connected to, to MB. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is get your guide data. And unfortunately, like Plex, that includes the guide data, MB does not include the guide data by default yet. Uh, they say that on version 3.6 they will have built-in guide data. So what I've done is I've gone to, right now, like I said, MB does not include the guide data, but that's easily resolved. You can go to a company called Schedules Direct, and if you come over here to the uh, website, go to schedulesdirect.org, uh, they have a free top trial for seven days, so if you're just playing around with MB and you want to test it, this is a good one. Just sign up for an account with them. Uh, right now, I have a short-term account, with the, which is a two-month membership for 6 bucks, Gives you everything you need, or you can sign up for $25 a year. Now, that being said, it is quite possible that MB's version 3.6 may not allow you to do multiple guides. I haven't gotten the answer on that. I've been poking around in the forums to see exactly what they're going to offer. They don't mention multiple guide data, but even if they don't, I can still continue using schedules direct for my gay, guide data for my gay data boy i wonder if that's an extra charge anyway so let's show you now how to set up the guide in mb all right so this assumes that you've gone out to schedules direct and you've gotten your uh, signed up for your guide data and uh, i'm going to show you now how to put that into mb i want to make sure i'm on the right view here so let me flip that over so you go down here to live TV and then you go down to TV guide data providers. Now, if you want to deal with XML TV, that's fine. I'd prefer schedules direct. That's what I'm using. So what you're going to do is click on schedules direct. You're going to enter your username and your password. So after you click on save, you'll want to select your country. You just enter United States for me. My zip code is 78155. And the first lineup I want see if I can choose this here the first lineup I want is for my antenna okay and I'm gonna enable this for all tuner devices so I'm gonna go ahead and click on save all right now what it's gonna do is go out and it's gonna you can see it says USA over the air for zip code 78155 and it's refreshing the guide data this is for my local channels the next thing I'm going to do is add another TV guide data provider. And yes, you can do this. You can have multiple guide datas with the same account. So I'll enter my super secret information. Click on save. United States again. My zip code is 78155. And the lineup I want this time is HD Home Run Premium TV East. So if you're in Texas like I am, they, they tell you to use the East Coast feed. They do have a West Coast feed as well. Uh, and that is mainly to get your times on your guide right. So buyer beware. Be aware of that. If you pick the wrong times on your guide data, it may, may be kerfuffled. And I'm going to enable that for all tuner devices. Then I'm going to click on Save. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to go out and it's going to get guide data for you. So let's come back to the dashboard. And what you're looking for is for this to be completed and disappeared. So you see why I like this dashboard. It kind of tells you what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and let it refresh the guide data. And then we'll come back and we'll take a look at what it's retrieved. Okay, well, that actually didn't take very long to get the guide data. I've been gone a few, a few more minutes than it took because I had other things to do. Uh, but now we can go into MB and see what we got as far as guide data. So now if we come into our MB web interface, you can see that we now have live TV here. So I could go to live TV and it'll give me the on now uh, programs. Uh, I don't like this view. I'm old school. I'm an old school guy. I, I know a lot of people like this view and that's fine. But I like the old tried and true method of going to a guide. Um, that is just better for me. Now, I al already pointed this out in another, uh, in my previous uh, MB episode, but if I want to get metadata information, I just basically click on the Dr. Oz show and it gives me a synopsis of what's going on. And I've got a couple of options here. I could record the series, 
I can record this one episode or I can play it. So, and you'll see now that I indeed have guide data for, for all my local channels, which start at 4.1 and go down to 60. The channels that I told to exclude on the uh, HD Home Run interface are excluded. You don't see them appear here. Uh, I don't have all of my, uh, well, some of these, uh, some of these icons back here are kind of hard to see, like grit and uh, unknown. Uh, it's hard to see the little icons back there, so I don't know what the cause of that is. And then here's my premium channels that uh, I get with uh, the, H the Silicon Dust Premiere service. So, uh, Revenge of the Nerds, I could go there, I could uh, view the synopsis, and then all I have to do is click on play, and hopefully this will start playing the video. Now, I'm going to mute it once it starts playing, because I don't want to get a copyright infringement, but there you can see it is playing the video. And if you come back to the dashboard, you can see MB tells you that you have a device uh, on Chrome, uh, MB Mobile 3.5.0. It's playing AMC. Uh, it'll also... No, it doesn't show. It only shows recordings in the upper right-hand corner, so I've showed you that previously. But you can see it's direct streaming. I can click on this, and uh, let's see. The media is compatible with the device regarding resolution and media type, but is an incompatible file container. The video will be repackaged on the fly before streaming it to the device, so I got that. So doing its direct streaming... Still playing just fine. Oh, I miss that guy. He's uh, He was also on uh, Married with Children. He's not dead, but I just haven't seen him in anything lately. And you see I had a little breakup in the stream there, but that's okay. Um, so there you go. There's live TV up and running. And to get out of that, we just go back. It brings us back to the guide. So if I wanted to say I wanted to record the middle land of the lost, all I have to do is click on record. It will then add it to the schedule, which is right here. And you can see it's going to gonna be recorded from 4 to 4.30. And then I can just go back home and continue on with anything I wanted to. So there's the guide, and there's the guide data, and there's how you uh, view your guide. And if I had any recordings, they would go right here. I don't have any right now. I could also view by channel. That's another nice feature, and I gotta tell you, uh, it's faster than Plex, uh, especially with live TV. So, uh, yeah, I like MB. Uh, I think you'll like it too. Uh, at, like I said, I'm running two different copies of MB, just like I am with Plex now. I'm running one on my Exponology NAS, and I'm running one on my little uh, white box right back there, my gaming PC. I don't do a lot of gaming. I just built that PC to show you what you could do with used parts. I'm putting it to good use running MB. And I wanted to see what the speed differences were. That machine behind me is an i5-4570 processor with 16 gig of RAM and a very fast SSD hard drive. It is running Windows 10. It's running MB 3.5.3. And then the other version of MB I have is on my quad-core i3 processor on my Exponology NAS with 8 gig of RAM. But it never go. It never even uses the eight gig of RAM I have on there on Exponology. So uh, this is more CPU dependent. And uh, now the future I understand for MB is is they're going to be able to do uh, en encoding or, or decoding using your video card. So if you're building a custom unit to host to host MB, you might want to wait until MB comes out and has that out of beta. Uh, I know Plex has that already. They support video transcoding on the fly using onboard video cards. So uh, you may want to see, wait and see where MB comes on that before you, you know, make any big leaps to it. And like I said, MB 3.6 is going to be coming out, hopefully, uh, in the first quarter of 2019 is what they had said. So we'll see what kind of new features and see if they cludge up the interface. And keep in mind, I've only touched... Uh, a little bit of what you can do with that MB interface. My understanding is that interface is completely customizable. So go out to the MB forums and uh, ask people that are more knowledgeable than I am, and I'm sure they can sure they can help you. Now again, speaking from my personal experience, ever since the last couple of Plex updates, I have had man just horrible instability whether it's running on a Windows version of Plex or run, whether it's running on my Exponology NAS version. Um, 
sometimes we'll go to play a video and it'll say no it's lost connection to the server it's never done that before never had that problem also if uh, on the roku if it goes to a screensaver you know the roku screensaver uh normally it would stay in the plex application now it kicks you out that kind of thing you know and and the big thing for us was uh, it was having trouble playing high def videos uh, it just seemed to uh, really load down the processor and, the, and I'm talking about the last two updates of Plex the one before the interface changes and the one after the interface changes I've had nothing but instability on it you know the spouse come to me all the time and say well it, it started playing the video and after about 10 or 15 minutes it just threw me out of Plex um, I haven't been thrown out of MB at all uh, MB even handles videos that I previously had ripped in the wrong format got the audio or something wrong or the subtitles and mb doesn't seem to care and i think that's due to the fact that mb uses ffmp mpeg to uh to decode the videos with uh, i could be wrong i mean it i know it does but i don't know what plex uses so that could be the the difference between the two but you know when you've got this up and running and your family is using it you want it to be stable you don't want them to come to you every 10 minutes with a problem um, and MB is, is working very well for us. And one important thing I forgot to mention, if we come back over to the MB TV interface, now mind you, I've had Plex using live TV for a number of months and it works great, but for example, I recorded a bunch of Columbo episodes because I'm cheap and I don't want to have to buy the series, but I happen to like Columbo as I'm sure a lot of you do. These are all recordings from Plex. So not only am I able to to get metadata for them, but I'm also able to watch it make a liar out of me. And there you go. I'm able to watch the videos I recorded with Plex on my MB Media Center. So, uh, and all my data is there. This is one of my favorite ones, is Stitch and Crime. If you've never seen it, it's uh, with Leonard Nimoy. The thing about Columbo is he always had these guest actors. And they played off of each other so well. I could go on forever about Columbo. But again, that's just one of the TV series that I have that I recorded off of Plex. I have some Lost in Space, Married with Children. It kept all those because I'm using the same library. So there you go. Part two of our MB series of videos. Now, I'm not going to do another deep dive. Well, I may do another deep dive of MB. I don't know what the future may hold for me. But as I learn new things about MB, maybe I'll put up a 10 or 15 minute video on there sharing it with you. And please, those of you that are more familiar with MB than I am, point things out to me in the comment section. I love the comment section. Please tell me everything you know about MB. And let's put together a, a, maybe another video where I get some things maybe that I got wrong correct or some things I got wrong with Plex correct either way uh, and I'm going to keep Plex around I'm going to keep playing for the pe uh, Plex pass uh, I'm going to find a way on my Roku to switch back to the old interface or I'm going to downgrade to a previous version of Plex I don't know we'll we'll try some things and as I learn it I'll share it with you so I haven't abandoned Plex altogether but I will tell you MB is faster with live TV MB is faster playing 1080p videos. I don't watch any 4K video because, frankly, the eyeballs can't see in 4K. So why spend the money? But anyway, I digress. If you're into 4K, uh, there are a couple of videos out there on on the YouTubes that even show you MB does a better job with 4K video. And I think it has all has to do with the FFmpeg encoder. Uh, now, MB is not open source, neither is Plex. They both are, have gone to closed source. But I'll also tell you something else. You get what you pay for. And I don't mind playing, paying for a Plex Pass uh, when they had, uh, for example, back when you had the Plex Pass earlier, you could get that uh, extended information about music. They even had music videos on there that you could watch in addition to your music library. They took that out of there. I guess it was a copyright or a, you know, some sort of copyright claim or something. But they took that feature out of there. I really like that feature. So you got to take the good and the bad, and I'm sure MB will remove features that some people may like. So your mileage might vary, but I encourage you, MB is a small program, doesn't pay, take up a lot of RAM or a lot of CPU. Load it on a machine you got, or load it alongside a Plex and try it for yourself. Uh, because until you use it on your devices, your TVs, your Rokus, your NVIDIA Shields, everything else, and until you try it on all your devices, you're not going to know how well it works for you or if it works at all. So, there you go.
All right, enough rambling. You tell I'm excited because I ramble when I'm excited. So, but I'd rather just get it all out there and let you all be the judge of whether it's good or not. So, we hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Please give us a thumbs up down below and leave your comments in the comments section. We again, we hope you we hope you appreciated this video. I'm glad to see everybody coming back and these videos getting some traction. And I hope. We've done something that interests you with this video. Donations are gladly accepted. We accept PayPal and Patreon. Again, we're trying to save up for that Uber 10 gig switch from, uh, from uh, uh, who is it? Ubiquity. Thank you. Yeah, the, the 10XG or whatever that switch is called. The one I evaluated for Morton and sent over to Denmark. Uh, we're trying to get one of those in here. So, And we do have some videos coming up on 10 gig Ethernet. Uh, it's not all it's cracked up to be, just let me say that. Uh, so anyway, come back and see us again. And please don't forget that we will see you on the other side.